I'm Lisa Camilleri, and my guest today is Daniel Tawana from Canada. Daniel has just turned 10 years old, and you are in grade four at St. George's School in Vancouver. You're currently ranked number one in your province, your national number five for under 11s. So thank you very much for joining me here today, Daniel. Uh, thank you so much for having me on this interview. I'm, I'm very excited. It's an honor to be on this. You're welcome. I saw, um, obviously I saw a YouTube channel in your video and from that, I just loved it. I love seeing your energy, your passion for the sport and how hard you're training already at your very young age. So I loved, um, got in contact with you and thought, perfect opportunity to interview you because I'm now a coach. I was a professional player for many years and now, you know, just coaching a lot of juniors. My passion is um, juniors and um, I thought it'd be a great opportunity to chat with you. What age did you start playing and why squash? Uh, well, I started playing squash when I was probably six or seven. My dad, he's a very keen club player. He loves squash and I like to just hang around the courts whenever I was bored at our local club. Uh, for the first year or two that I played squash, I played maybe once or twice a week just for fun. I guess the big turning point came last September, October when I was nine. I just, I realized how much I loved squash. And so I told my dad, I said, I really want to get good at squash and I want to start competing properly. I think that was the green light for him. And since then I've been playing regularly and I've been getting coached properly. Wow. That's awesome. Um, is your dad your coach? Uh, he's one of my coaches. Uh huh. Yeah. Do you, um, how many coaches do you have? <laughs> well, I have two different coaches other than my dad. Uh, one coach is Marco Torres at West Coast Squash Academy, and the other is uh, Victor Berg at Van Loon. I just want to uh, backtrack a little bit. My first coach, first coach I ever had, was Ian Woodhead at the Arbutus Club, and I just want to give him a little shout out because he's now working in Ottawa, and I just want to say hi to him in this video because. I just have a feeling he'll be watching it. Yeah, cool. So um, did you change coaches because he moved to Ottawa? Was that the main reason? Uh, yeah, but yeah. I do have two different coaches other than him. Okay, great. So what would your, so, you know, for instance, if we're in a normal situation out of, um, obviously today the squash courts are closed, but if we're in a normal situation, can you talk to us a little bit about what your weekly training schedule would be? Well, my, my weekly training schedule, first of all, I would be playing six or seven days a week. Like I said, I have two different coaches, Marco Torres at West Coast Squash Academy and Victor Berg at Van Lawn. Uh, I'll see both of them once a week. And the other four or five days, I usually just hit with my dad. I think that's allowed me to improve pretty quickly and I actually cannot wait to get back on a court and play a proper match against him. He's got good hands, which means he's great at feeding the ball when we drill, but he's also incredibly lazy as a squash player and he's not particularly fit. So I think if I were to just move him around the court and rally with him, I'll be able to take him out. <laughs> awesome. Is that one of your um, main goals is to be able to beat your dad? I guess. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I see your brother plays as well? Uh, yes, he does play a bit. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, do you currently play any other sports? Uh, well, usually I'd be playing baseball in the spring. I think that I love baseball, but I think not playing baseball right now has really given me a chance to focus more on squash during quarantine. Yeah. Okay. So you mentioned that you're down the club six to seven days hitting. Is there any other elements um, that you focus on? For instance, you know, Paul Cole, he's right into his strength and conditioning. You've got Gregory Goldier, who loves his core work. Do you do any other training apart from being on the squash court? 
Well, right now in quarantine, I guess, I've started doing lots of core work. Uh, I think it, there are two reasons that you really need to work on your core. One reason is if you're just stretching out to get a volley, you need to be balanced, hit a better shot, and having a strong core allows you to do that. Uh, the second reason that you need to have a strong core is just so you're bigger. Because for me, if I were to play somebody who's bigger and older than me, I need to be able to keep up with them and compete with them. So I'll be doing lots of core work like crunches. I'll do lots of the plank. I'll do lots of other core activities. And I'll always do hundreds of push-ups every day. Wow. So quite um, big on just building core strength. Like you said, core is such an important element. For me, I sort of say your core is your motor. If you've got a weak core, you're not going to have the, the power and the strength to really be able to do anything. Watching your YouTube video, I mean, if no one's seen your view, YouTube video, um, I'll put a link below where they can check it out. But in that video, you did a lot of skipping. Is that another one of your main elements with your training? Uh, yeah, I, I started skipping eight weeks ago, the start of quarantine. I found the skipping rope in the garage. I would practice for an hour a day just practicing and perfecting all the simple things. And then while I was watching Anthony Joshua training videos on YouTube, I realized he likes to do all these, these tricks like high knee crossovers and double unders and normal crossovers. And I realized that I could do all these things too. So I just started YouTubing some videos about all these cool moves and now I'm practicing them and I'm trying to incorporate them into my skipping routines. Um, so a little bit about, um, you seem to be quite motivated and um, quite focused on things. Can you talk to us a little bit about what your goals are and, and obviously when squash is back to normal, what's, what's for you ahead in the rest of this year and obviously next year? Uh, well, my goals, I don't really have any right now. The most important thing I focus on is the next training session, the next match I play, the next tournament I enter. I'm just trying to keep everything as simple as possible. Uh, one of my coaches gave me a great piece of advice and it's focus on the journey, not the destination. There is no end goal. Just let everything fall into place. And so I always try and keep this in mind all the time. But what I'm doing, it may, look really hard for some people but it's actually lots of fun mm -hmm. you know the the hitting the doing drills the off-court training it's all a part of squash and i love it i just want to keep on improving and keep on getting better oh that's so good what's what's your favorite part of your training my training the feeling you get after a really hard session of training <laughs> that sense of accomplishment i guess uh, yeah. You know you, you push yourself to the limit. You know that you push yourself to the limit, either physically or just on a squash court. Uh, Anthony Joshua, like I said, um, he phrases it like this. He says that all that hard work and effort you put into your practice is like putting money in the bank so you can cash it out later during the match. You seem to have such great uh, focus on things already. Um, see, you've just turned 10. So you've got one more year in the under 11s, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And have you played any international events so far? Uh, I have. Last December, I, was, I played in the US Junior Open, U11. Okay. I saw in your YouTube channel to be the, the best in the world for your age group. A lot of juniors, they sort of focus you know, being the best in their province or being the best in their country. But you seem to have leaped ahead of that and you, you aim to be the best in the world. Where, where has that come from? Where has that come from? I just, I honestly don't know. I just, I just feel as though I can do it. I feel as though I could be the best in the world. And I think I may not, but I think it's possible. Yeah, good. That's that's great confidence. And I think you haven't put limitations on yourself, which is, you know, fantastic. Let's talk a little bit about away from training. Um, how do you relax and uh, what do you do in your free time? 
I like to read a lot. Uh, at the moment, I have been reading lots of sports autobiographies. I also just like watching good TV shows. Uh, some of my favorite shows are Grey's Anatomy. I think I've seen every season and every single episode at least three times. Uh, <laughs> the West Wing. I, I just recently started this and I'm into season three right now. I'm really enjoying it. And This Is Us. I, I also really loved uh, The Last Dance. Mm -hmm. It's my, The Last Dance was my uh, first time actually seeing Michael Jordan play and train. And I just love seeing that incredible drive and, and focus that separated MJ from all the other players, just like it did with somebody like um, Tiger Woods or Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. I also like watching a good movie. Okay, wow. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's talk a little bit about, obviously you're stuck at home at the moment. Um, we're in quarantine. Um, and you've mentioned you're doing a lot of, uh, sort of skipping and core work. I did notice on your YouTube channel, your dad's built you a little squash court in your garage. That's pretty cool. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Well, I, I like to go in the garage for two sessions a day, 45 minutes each session around there. Uh, there are three types of, three things I really like to focus on when I'm in the garage. Uh, the first thing is just doing volleys. I'll do 400 volleys on the forehand side and 400 volleys on the backhand side. Uh, this just helps me strengthen my forearm and arm. And I like to do lots of cross-court volleys too. That's one thing I like to do in there. A sec another thing that I like to do in there is just drives. I'm very lucky to have a back wall in my garage that my dad created for me. So I always practice my forehand and backhand drives. And I think it's especially good because there's only a small target area where you can hit the ball. You can't hit it too high or too low, otherwise it won't come off the back wall and you will not be able to get it back. And I think it's really nice to practice that in the garage because if I get back on a bigger court, like a normal squash court where I can hit the ball too high and too low, I won't have to worry about hitting it in one little spot on the wall because mm -hmm. If I do hit it too high or too low, I'll just be able to get it back off the wall. Yeah, that's and so good. I mean, you're very lucky. Like I know a lot of people don't have the space in the situation where, you know, they can ha have sort of a mini squash court in their backyard. And But like you said, having sort of limitations where the back wall is shorter, it's, it's definitely going to help you with your accuracy to be mm -hmm. able to, you know, hit a target um, so many times in a row. So that's pretty cool. Is there any other advice you could give to juniors at your age and kids that are starting off? My coach once gave me three bits of advice for a squash match, and this is advice I'd give to other junior players, other players. The first thing is just when you're in a squash match, focus on the match and nothing else. Don't be distracted by anything else in your life. The second thing is try and take the ball as early as possible, which basically means just volley everything. And the third thing is be creative as possible. Be as creative as possible. So use your imagination with every single shot you hit. And I found that this really helps me when I'm in a squash match. And that's the advice I give to other junior players. Wow, that's three great little points there. If we can break that up a little bit. Like your first point, you said not to be distracted. Can you give us some feedback or some tips on, for instance, if you're going on a match and someone in the crowd or something was distracting you and you weren't able to focus as well, is there anything that you do in particular to help bring your focus back? I just try and focus on what's in the court. I just zone out all other noises. I just, I just focus on the match. It's also things that are going on in your life, like maybe lots of schoolwork you have to do or, or a relative could be sick. You cannot let things like this distract you. You need to just zone into your match and do not think about anything else other than 
what you're doing, which is playing at match. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. So thank you very much today, Daniel. You, you know, you're on the right track already at such a young age. I think, um, you know, with your worth ethic and your passion behind you, keep it up because you're going to go places and we'll definitely keep a, a track on you. So thank you very much for your time today. It was a pleasure having you on and sharing just some tips and some knowledge to all the other juniors that will hopefully watch this video. Yeah, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we can, after this uh, pandemic is over, we can actually meet in person. Either you can come to can Canada or maybe I go to Australia for a splash match in a tournament.